The following lesson is linked to learning outcome four, language, and addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to use gender, plurals, and diminutives of nouns correctly. Learners should be able to explain how language positions the learner by implicit and explicit messages, values, and attitudes. Imagine if this were a French petrol station. We would have the following. La pompe à essence. La voiture. Le magasin. Le téléphone. Et l'arrêt. The reason why the French words have le and la in front of them is because they indicate gender. In French, all nouns are assigned a gender. La refers to something being feminine and le refers to something being masculine. I'm not sure how they decide that a payphone and a shop are masculine, but a petrol pump and a car are feminine, but somehow they have. Luckily, gendered nouns in English are much more simple and don't apply to every single noun. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify gender nouns and use gender nouns effectively. Forget about la and le. It's more important for us to discover what gender nouns are in the English context. Let's break the term down. In lesson one, we learned about nouns, so you should be clear about that. But what about the term gender? Do you understand what it means? Here is a definition. Gender is the classification as either masculine, feminine or neuter. So what that means is that something is either male, female or neither. All males are part of the masculine gender and all females are of the feminine gender. And then there are things, items or objects which are neither male nor female. So they are of neutral gender or neuter. So if nouns name people, places, objects, feelings and ideas, and gender refers to being masculine, feminine or neuter, what do you think I mean when I refer to a gender noun? Let's look at the definition. Gender noun is the name of a person, animal or an object which also identifies the gender of that person, animal or object. Here is a range of gender nouns that I have already divided into male and female. Grandmother would never refer to a male. The mother part of the noun indicates that the person being referred to must be female. The word son cannot apply to a girl. Son is a gender noun as it demonstrates the gender of the person involved. Niece is a gender noun. A niece is a female who is the daughter of either your sister or your brother. A niece could never be male. A husband is the male person to whom a woman is married. An aunt is the sister of either your father or your mother. She is always female. The male version of an aunt is an uncle. And girlfriend is a feminine noun. And a brother-in-law over here is the man to whom your sister is married. It is important to know and use these gender nouns because people may get offended if you refer to them using an incorrect gender noun. They are also important when you want to use pronouns. If you are talking about a female, such as a wife, mother or aunt, you must remember to use the feminine pronouns her and she. And in the case of males, you would obviously use the masculine pronouns him, he and his. But gender nouns don't only refer to family relationships. They also refer to professions or jobs that people have. Although this group of gender nouns is slowly fading out of use, you may still come across them in English texts and speech, 
So let's have a look at a few examples. Manageress, actress, authoress, waitress, and air hostess. If you had come across a female who was in charge of a garage 20 years ago, you would have referred to her as a manageress. Nowadays, females who are in charge are quite common, but who will not hear the term manageress. Instead, the boss, male or female, is known as the manager. The gender noun, actress, referred to a female who was a stage or screen performer. The male form was actor. Today, actor refers to either male or female star. In the same way, the female version of a writer was authoress. The commonly accepted term today is writer for a female or a male author. I'm sure that you have all heard the term waiter. This is a genderless or neuter noun. When you hear the term, you know that it refers to someone who will serve food and drinks in a restaurant, but it does not specify the gender of the person involved. Flight attendant is also a genderless noun and has replaced the term air hostess. Feminine gender nouns all used to refer to female people doing specific jobs. But unlike the gender nouns that refer to members of families, you don't often hear them being used. Why do you think we don't really use these terms anymore? The reason why gender nouns for professions are not commonly used today is that people have realized that the gender nouns describing tasks done specifically by a female or a male were silly because there was no difference in a woman's and a man's ability to do these tasks. In the 21st century, it is not politically correct to define people's ability according to their gender. It is for this reason that many gender nouns which used to be fairly common have fallen into disuse. We now know that some words that refer to people have gender, but have you ever heard of an object being given a gender? If you read some of the older English text, you may come across ships or cars that are referred to as female. You may read about a ship that has made her maiden voyage across the Atlantic, or you might come across a sentence like this. That old car, she went like the wind. Maybe it's because anything that was beautiful and expensive and desired was considered to be female. Nowadays, we don't really use gendered nouns for objects. Objects are of neutral gender. This means that they are not categorized as being male or female. Objects are commonly referred to as it rather than he or she. Thank goodness for that. It's one less thing we have to worry about in our writing. One group of English nouns where a distinction is made between masculine and feminine gender is in the name of animals. You might be familiar with nouns such as these. Cow and bull, hen and cock, mare and stallion. There are others that are a bit more obscure and you probably won't come across them. For example, a male swan is a cob whilst a female swan is a pen. And a male cat is a tom and a female cat is a queen. It is really not essential that you learn lists of gender nouns used for animals. In your writing you can quite easily refer to a swan or if you really wanted to be specific a female swan, even if you didn't know the correct term. If you ever did want to know the proper gender noun, you would be able to find it in a dictionary. When you read, you may occasionally come across a gender noun for an animal that you are not aware of. But as with any unfamiliar word, you will often be able to work out what type of animal is being referred to from the context. Or you could just look it up in your dictionary. Think about the following question and discuss it in groups. Whereas many professions such as doctor, teacher and lawyer are gender neutral, 
one often hears people speak of a male nurse. Why do you think this is so? I hope that you have a clear understanding of gender nouns in terms of people and their relationships and that you are now aware of the sensitivities around gender nouns for occupations. Practice using them correctly in your writing and speaking. Bye for now.